Namaste everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Pooja and today I have the pleasure of bringing to you a video that answers a very commonly asked question about karma. This video is recorded for us by my very first Bhagavad Gita teacher, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Swami, whom I'm very, very grateful for. And the teachings discussed in this video are based off the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Please enjoy the video and watch out for part two of this video on my channel as well. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Pranams. Namaste. My name is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Swami, and I'd like to answer a question philosophically based on the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita as it is, by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. So the question is, if we're all part of the Divine, why are we suffering? We hear about people killing each other. People are raping girls. It's terrorism. All kinds of terrible things happening. So why this suffering in the world? Why do bad things happen to good people? So this world, for one thing, the Vedas say, Dukalayam Ashasvatam. Duk means suffering. So it's a place of suffering. And it's, it's a temporary place. So we shouldn't expect that this world be a bed of roses. That's just something the advertising companies encourage us to, to think, that we should be enjoying 24 hours a day. And if we're not, we need to buy their product so that we'll enjoy. But our expectations should not be like that. We should know that this world is a place of suffering. For example, uh, your pinky finger, how much pleasure can it give you? If you like massage your pinky, okay, it feels okay, feels nice. But if you slam your pinky in a car door, how much pain is it going to give you? So similarly, this world is, is just designed to give pain. It's, it's a place of pain and suffering. And we come here because of our karma because we have lessons to learn, we have previous desires. And if we have desires at the time of death, uh, Krishna gives us another opportunity to come here and fulfill those desires. Of course, anyone who comes here will have to suffer birth, death, disease, and old age. These four are just built into the equation of anyone who takes birth here. So we're here to learn. We have our lessons to learn here. And uh, this world is also called Durga. We hear, hear about Durga Devi, the goddess. So Durga means prison house and Durga Devi, she's overseeing the prison. So prisons have two purposes. Number one, to protect the public from prisoners. And number two, to rectify the prisoners so they can reform and become good people, good members of the public again. So this material world that we live in, this also has these two functions. It keeps us separate, those souls, those atmas that choose to come from the spiritual world to come to the material world, those that choose to come here, they are to be kept separate from the residents of the spiritual world. We come here because we're envious of God. We want to play that God role. We're like all little gods running around trying to control our world here. So this, this world is, is protecting us protecting those citizens of the spiritual world from our contaminated consciousness of trying to enjoy separately from God and also to rectify our consciousness so that we can become good citizens of the spiritual world once again, to prepare our consciousness to go back to the spiritual world, not to take birth again in this material world. So sometimes an objection may be raised that, you know, 
let's say someone takes birth in a poor family, they're malnourished, they're getting punished for their past karmas. But what if I have no idea of what I've done in the past? How can you punish me? How can you just slap me in the face without even telling me why? So the answer is that the answers to these questions are there for someone who's sincerely inquiring, inquisitive, who's looking for the answers to these questions. They're available in Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, in the spiritual persons who live their life according to the holy wisdom books. Uh, one book that I really appreciate that I've been studying for the past 30 years is Bhagavad Gita and trying to live my life in this regard. Why is a baby born blind? Uh, no, no other scripture in the world can explain this, but Bhagavad Gita explains it's due to the karma. The baby in the previous life had done something uh, which accrued some bad karma, which caused the baby to be born blind. Otherwise, uh, it just seems like God's random act of, of uh, cruelty. But it's God loves us. And part of God's love for us is he wants our love in return. So love needs to be, it needs to be voluntary. We cannot put a gun to someone's head and say, tell me you love me, tell me you love me, tell me. But the person may say, yes, yes, I love you. But it's, it's not voluntary. It's, it's being forced. So God or Krishna will never force us by saying, yes, you're suffering because you did this and you did that and you're envious of me and therefore you're being punished. If he said like that right to our face, then we would have no choice but to believe in God and to accept him. But he wants to give us a choice. So for those who are sincere and they really go and look into the, the important questions of life, like who am I? And why am I suffering? Well, many people, they never ask these two questions. Who am I? I am an eternal servant of God, of Krishna. Jivaras Rupahoy, Krishnara Nityadas. And why am I suffering? It's because of my ignorance of understanding my relationship with God. And what are my responsibilities and what are the activities? Like a good son serving his father. So we should understand this relationship is very important. So divine is not punishing us. It's, it's our choice. We make the choice of, of how we want to interact with God. If we want to just ignore God, then God says, fine, you have every right to do that. It's, it's your choice. But understand that if we choose that, then we're going to consider suffering birth after birth after birth in this world. But if we ask this question, why am I suffering? Then we can start to uh, inquire and read these wisdom books. And uh, we can actually begin getting out, digging ourselves out of the situation. So the government doesn't like to build prisons. But naturally, some people will always be criminals. So the government has to build a prison just to accommodate those people. If a prison budget to build a prison is like $5 million, the government is not so enthusiastic to spend that, but it, it needs to. There will always be criminal elements. So like that, there were the criminal elements that came from the spiritual world here to the material world, and we need to rectify our consciousness. So how to do that? Take help from Guru Sadhu Shastra. Guru are those wonderful personalities who teach. Sadhus, they also teach. They, they exemplify the principles of scriptures in their own life, wisdom books. And Shastra means the, those wisdom books, those wonderful scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. So we should be inquisitive. Kayami, who am I and why am I suffering? This is very important. This is the takeaway. Ask yourself these questions. Investigate the solution. Who am I and why am I suffering? The answers are for there, for those who are sincerely seeking the answer. I'll just conclude with one verse from Bhagavad Gita. 
Sarvasichaham ridi sanyavisto, Matasmitir gyanam uponam cha, Vedaischa sarvam aham eva vedyo, Vedanta vid eva vid eva chaham. This is 15th chapter, 15th verse. Krishna says that I am seated in everyone's heart. Sarvasa chaham ridi sanyavistaha. I am situated in everyone's heart. Matasmitir gyanam maponam cha. From me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. If we want to remember Krishna, if we want that knowledge, Krishna will give that knowledge. If we want forgetfulness of Krishna, if we don't want to remember Krishna, if we want to ignore Krishna, if we want to come up with all kinds of atheistic arguments against the existence of God, then Krishna says, okay, take that intelligence, take that forgetfulness. It's your choice. Maponam cha Vedais cha savar aham eva vedyo Vedanta krit veda ved eva chaham Indeed, I am the knower of the Vedas and I am the compiler of the Vedanta and it is by all the Vedas I am to be known. So the existence of God is, is Krishna is the sum total of all the Vedic knowledge. That is the conclusion. That is the answer. So I hope this addresses this question. If we're all part of the divine, why are we suffering? Thank you so much. Hare Krishna.